Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Monday, December 2nd. Hope everybody enjoyed their long Thanksgiving weekend, spending time, good quality time with family and friends. Nice to take a little bit of uh, break. Back to the markets here. We had a little bit of a red day on Friday. Um, half, uh, actually, it was a half a session, but uh, nonetheless, Dow Jones was down almost 11 points. Nasdaq was up 15. S and P up one and a half, down one and a half, excuse me, and the Russell up one and a half. So we had a little bit of a, of a little bit of a pullback. But if you, I uh, wanted to show you that the, in the last week or so, we've had sell programs hit at the end of the day. So there is some material selling going on here. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people picked that up, but I wanted to show this to you on a chart. Here's a 10-minute spider chart. And basically from the uh, 19th of, this, of November, at the end of the day or close to it, we get that sell-off here, here. We had a sell-off here. And then, of course, we had um, two days that we, had, we went up, but then we had a sell-off here here and then on Friday as well. The market just literally just dumped, fell out of bed. That tells me is that you need to have a, a, um, some caution here because um, markets are getting really frothy now, guys. There is literally, we haven't had, uh, I think we pulled together three down days and one, one day was uh, basically a flat day. Uh, markets are extended and we have a lot of economic data this week. So Please look at your economic calendar because there is a lot of data. We had some uh, econ data come out of Europe uh, in the overnight session. Markets were up about three, three and a half. Did not like what it saw, um, and markets sold off here right around three o'clock. And uh, uh, minis were down about seventy-five cents. At one point, they were down about two handles. So buyers of dips are still out there looking to buy the dip. But I would really, really take take a step back and before putting any long positions on. Um, December, I think, is going to be a little tricky. However, I think we're going to get that pullback that we're looking for. And it, it could be two or three days, but uh, I think the markets are paused for a little bit of a pullback. And I think that if we can uh, get a two or three day pullback, maybe, uh, you know, chop around today, tomorrow, and then really start to um, start to sell off, um, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I think you're going to have uh, then a big push, I would say, uh, uh, buyers or dips would probably buy that and then um, maybe a good rally going into the end of the year. But that is all dependent on um, if we get a pullback, if we don't get a pullback. I mean, we could easily just grind here between now and the end of the year. There is tax selling that does come in uh, last few days of the year, so just keep that in mind as well. So it's going to be a little bit of tricky, to, a little tricky to play these markets, but the market in itself is doing nothing. Okay, um, we've uh, talked about this. We have markets are just grinding higher, doing nothing. There are stocks that are moving, but they're selective. Uh, there's a lot of stocks that are just either gap up, gap down, and, and honestly, just basically staying in a range. Uh, pretty much like the FX markets have been uh, range bound pretty much most of March um, with selective few. Uh, a lot of the uh, majors are in, are, in, um, are in large symmetrical triangles or channels, and uh, a lot of the exotics are actually starting to... Uh, do a lot of move, but they, you got to be careful with them because they have a little bit of uh, lack of liquidity. Uh, but back to the equity markets now, you have, um, uh, we have the end of the year, uh, and I think that you have to be real cautious here because at any given time, when you have something like this coming into play, the markets will not just wait till the end of the uh, end of the day, they will start to sell off and really uh, get going. So just, you know, please, if you Long stocks, you have a lot of longs on, a little hedge here doesn't hurt because um, you could easily, you know, open up down 15, 20 handles here in any given day. So just uh, just a quick heads up. But I wanted to show this to you that we have sell programs hitting just about every day at the end of the day. And that's starting to, that's a big sign for me when I watch to see what happens at the price action at the end of the day. When selling starts to come in, you got to use caution here because there are bigger firms and funds starting to sell stock. Okay, and when that happens... That's not going to just happen at the end of the day. It'll start start dwindling down, um, and they'll start selling, you know, at the opening, uh, maybe midday, and then it starts to uh, kind of snowball, and everybody else starts to uh, jump in the bandwagon about selling stocks. Okay, so just a, a quick word of caution, but I wanted to get that out to you. All right, let's go into the indicators real quick. See what the indicators are doing. Um, bullish percent here, really stuck here. Um, we got we had a buy signal, we had the sell signal, and now we're just kind of chopping around here. 
I think it's going to break lower again. I do think the markets are way overdue for a pullback. Um, you're talking from the October 9th low, aside from even the rest of the year, just the October 9th low. I think we're, uh, we're due for a quick little pullback here. Remember what I mentioned to you before, Traders Almanac, um, at the Santa Claus rally, coming into approaching the Santa Claus so-called rally, um, the markets within 50 years have only been at, these, at, at overextended levels eight times, and the Santa Claus rally has not occurred. So let's just keep that in mind. It's only, uh, it's only statistics, but just keep that in mind here, guys. We are at, um, a, uh, at a really, really uh, extensions here, and um, uh, markets can and will do what it wants, obviously. And uh, to me, uh, I think we basically had the Santa Claus rally all of 2013. But nonetheless, can we push a little higher? Sure, absolutely we can. And we want to let price tell us which direction that we want to go. We are in a strong uptrend, but the uptrend just can't just continue to run higher and higher and without at least some sort of a pause, a pullback um, in the equity markets. Okay, so anyway... Um, we have the bullish percent here, so keep an eye on uh, what's going to happen uh, with the bullish percent. I do like this to see if this can roll over. And even, you know, even if we got back to 1740, uh, 1740 is even healthy for a year-end rally. Uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange new lows did tick lower. Okay, so that's actually not a bad sign, but what do you have here? It looks like an inverted head and shoulders, right, with the neckline here. This is the indicator that I am going to be watching. Uh, every day very closely if we start to break out here and um, the new 52 week highs as you can see on the uh, on the other chart that I had here let me just pull this back up here um, no I don't have that sorry about that uh, new highs new lows here we go um, we are ticking higher right we're, we ticked higher but we we're not breaking out where the uh, markets were breaking out, the S&P, the Dow, continually making new highs here. That's not happening. So to me, this is lagging, and this is not good. This is not what you want to see. You want this indicator to be chugging along with the S&P. Okay? So these are the two that I'm going to be watching closely. The uh, McClellan Oscillator really hasn't done anything pretty much all of um, – all of October and November, we did get up to that one point uh, and then roll back down again. But you can see all of November, we haven't done anything. So uh, let's see what happens. Again, just telling us that this has more room to run before it becomes overbought and or oversold. Okay, let's take a look at the BKX index. Love the banks. Um, due for a pullback, which uh, is healthy. We did break out of the ascending triangle. We broke out of this uh, extra double top that we had previously back in July and August. Um, and I like this banks here. I wish it could come in a little bit more, and then I will be looking for some selective banks, which we'll get into in a, in a chart segment. Look at the XLF. Same thing here. Now, this is a, a good area for the uh, bullish percent to actually roll over again. So this is something that I'm going to be watching as well. This here is flatline, um, and if it does trigger a short, uh, a sell signal in the banks in the XLF banks and financials. Um, I think you can get down to you know 20 and a half, even you know 2025, 20, which is healthy. We had a nice little move up, and that's when you want to start picking up some of the banks. So uh, again, banks a little bit extended, but definitely on my buy list to buy is the banks. All right, so let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. Now the dollar here is actually interesting. It's up today, and we have a, a ton of support here in the dollar, and we just got to put in a little bit of a doji, maybe a short, small little spinning top here. Um, has to get above the 20-day moving average. Once it gets above the 20, I think you're going to take a shot to the 200-day, which is 81.87 here. Okay, so and if that happens, keep an eye on the commodities because commodities uh, will start to weaken here. CRB index as well. Okay, let's go into the uh, chart segment. We close the uh, November with a breakout above this large 2009 uptrend. We are at extensions. I did show you that um, we are at uh, extensions here uh, on the E-minis and the SPX. So be very, very careful. Uh, markets are at 2009 extensions, guys. So that's to me, that's a big, uh, um, a big red flag here that I, we are due any day for a pullback. Okay, and especially that the markets come in and selling a lot of strong selling at the end of the day. I mean, literally gave back all of its gains on Friday uh, and the, uh, that past week we had. Um, so that's something that you don't want to see if you want to continue to have this rally. But anyway, we did close above. Let's see if we can hold or we break back into this um, big, long uh, uptrend channel. Okay, now let's take a look at the weekly chart. Same thing here. Weekly, we're up and now we're just kind of stuck here at this uh, upper end of the range of this channel. 
Okay, we did break out of that um, bearish rising wedge. Again, only bearish if it breaks lower. But you see here, we're just kind of sitting on top of it. And here is the uh, spiders just kind of chugging along here. Again, at the upper end of the range, March 2012 lows. We're just sitting along here. Again, grossly overextended and grossly overbought. Here is the uh, diamonds. We're at the uh, upper end of the uh, Bollinger Band. Uh, again, good healthy pullback would be... Um, would be a great, great opportunity to end up be buying some stocks here at some level, selective stocks now, not just the market itself. Because again, we're still overextended. Even if you came in here, I'd like to see a good five to six percent uh, pullback, and that's that's uh, 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 you know not 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 crazy at all. I'd love to see a ten or twelve percent pullback, but I don't think that's going to happen. IYT Transports again chugging along here. Making the uh, making its way, bouncing off the 20, bouncing off the 20. Now we're we're way above the eight, and we're at our extensions again in uh, the Bollinger Band. So just a you know key caution here: use your caution and be careful here. Uh, IWMs, same thing, inside the uh, inside the channel, but at the extensions. We're at these areas here where we've uh, now we're at resistance again, yet again. But you see, we're just kind of moving higher. Uh, we took, we broke out of this downtrend channel, and now we're moving higher. And you can see here, we're overextended, and we ran up on no volume. Again, could be, that is to be expected. Obviously, we had a holiday week. This week's going to be very interesting, guys. A lot, a lot of data coming out, econ data. Here's the XLF, as you can see here, very extended. I'd like to see a pullback, but definitely the banks. And as you know, um, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and uh, Citibank are my three favorites. And i like to see all of them actually get back down to here 165 ish area 164 and a half 165 is something that i would be looking to um looking to buy as far as goldman and again here as you can see very extended i'd like to see uh, we could pick up jp morgan somewhere around the 55 area i'd like to see it come in back test it hold the line here this gap area of support and then start to rally again and that's something that um, i'm going to be looking for as well as well as citibank uh, here is the um, IGN networking sector. We're still in this head and shoulders pattern, which triggered. Okay, now we're kind of creeping back up here again. So let's uh, keep an eye on what, what's happening. Um, if, in fact, we take out the right shoulder, then obviously uh, all bets are off to the downside. And here is Apple. Um, Apple broke out. I said, guys, watch Apple here. If this could take out. This little consolidation area, look for a big breakout, and sure enough, we consolidated. We had energy building as the Bollinger Bands. Now, what you want to do is you want to obviously trade the trend. The trend is now higher. I'd be looking for pullbacks in Apple. I would not be chasing here, but looking for pullbacks in Apple to anywhere of a cluster or support area would be a good bet to the upside. And lastly is the Qs, as you can see here. Big, big move up, way extended, uh, and the fact that it does need a little bit of rest as well. Okay, and look at the volume here, low volume, and of course our momentum indicators are much um, uh, in, excuse me, in overbought areas. Okay, guys, that's really about it. Uh, we are overextended. The theme remains the same. We are bullish, but we are very extended here in the markets and are looking for some sort of signs or some sort of a pullback. Red flags are upon us, um, and we have a lot of econ data. If that's going to be the case, uh, look for the econ data um, to start pushing these markets one way or the other. To me, I think the uh, risk is going to be to the downside. Uh, let's take a look and see what happens. Maybe we get some follow-through, some uh, buying today, this morning. Uh, but I do think the markets are ready for a pullback. At least two, three, maybe four days, you know, a mixed bag. And then um, you're going to have some seasonal strength here. Remember, we are at the end of the month here. Uh, we have four weeks of trading, but really two and a half weeks, and then the last week or so is pretty much just uh, trading is just kind of drifting along. So um, use caution, and uh, let's see if we get a little bit of a pullback that we can buy into. Um, if not, I think that uh, the big area you're going to watch for, you're going to look for in the minis, is 1797. 1797 is going to be the first break lower is what I would be looking for in uh, the ES, okay? All right, guys, hope that helps. Have a great day. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.